the Westside Gazette held a town hall meeting to inform the community of Fort Lauderdale, and more specifically the black community, about the implementation of the ESA, which is better known as the Every Student Succeeds Act. The National Newspaper Publisher Association and the Westside Gazette hosted an event at the African American Research Library and Cultural Center. Community leaders, educators, and parents filled the Research and Cultural Center Monday night for a town hall meeting on the implementation of the ESSA program. The town hall meeting was being used to discuss how ESSA has become the main law for K-12 public education in the United States. It has replaced No Child Left Behind. The law holds schools accountable for how students learn and achieve, and it aims to provide an equal opportunity for students who get special education services. The event's theme was Lessons from the Past, a blueprint for the future in education. And it was opened by Makiba Foster, the library's regional manager. Welcome to the African American Research Library and Cultural Center. Um, we are very proud to host this important conversation about equal education opportunity for all children through Every Student Succeeds Act. Tonight's conversation aligns with the overall mission of ARLIC, which is to make accessible year-round resources, services, programs to educate the community about the cultures and the contributions of the people of the African diaspora. It is my hope that after this, this productive conversation that we establish an action plan for the future of our children. And finally, since you all are very passionate advocates for education, I sincerely encourage you all to join us every first Thursday of the month for our cultural conversation series where we are hoping to continue this kind of quest for knowledge and lifelong learning, um, educating folks about um, the brilliance and the, the ingenuity of the people of the African, African descent of, of the African diaspora. Civil rights leader and president and CEO of the National Newspaper Publishers Association, Dr. Benjamin Chavis, explained what he fought for. All of my uh, adult life, I've worked in the civil rights movement uh, since I was 14. And one of the things that we have fought for over the last 50, 60 years has been the issue of education for our children. When I say our children, because when you struggle for freedom, justice, and equality for black children, it endures benefit to all of God's children. The panel was composed of members of the school board, attorneys, a state senator, educators, civil rights activists, and the Broward County Sheriff. They were able to offer professional and personal insight on lessons learned during their time as students. If we don't change the actual mindsets and the actual structures of the people who work in the public education system, you're not gonna see the changes that you think that might be there. So there has to be a change in the mindset where we have um, equity in terms of expectations for all kids that come in there. Prior to integration in 1954, blacks in Fort Lauderdale were banned from using or being present in so-called white establishments. We are still restricted by signs like these. Later in this film, we shall see some of the ways in which the situation is changing. But during segregation, there was a strong sense of family, not just within the black family, but also outside amongst the black community. We raised each other's kids, and all of us took that responsibility upon us. Attorney Pettis shared his personal experience of growing up within the black community in Lauderdale. Is, despite what was going on around us here in Fort Lauderdale, when I grew up starting in 1960, there was a network of support around every child. That network of support was my family, and everybody didn't have a complete family structure. But my family went beyond 824 Northwest 17th Avenue. My family was at my church. My family was across the street, behind me. Everywhere I went, there was family. There was a network. And that network told me that I was somebody. That network told me to raise my hand, head high, stand up straight. Uh, and those are lessons that I think gave me confidence. Dr. Elizabeth Primus, the program manager for the NNPA, explained President Obama's role in getting ESSA implemented and how parents are being engaged to get involved. This was a law that was signed by President Obama in 2015 
that was the reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. And it was the new Civil Rights Act when it was initially written. What it did, it had Title I in it, so it gave funding to schools that had um, students that were poverty students, it gave funding to schools that had a high level of students that were low income students. Uh, it gave special ed services. So the Every Student Succeeds Act continues that. But what they did that was never done before, they put in a section for parent engagement. And they said for us to really be able to close the achievement gap for all of our kids who have been historically underserved, we need parent engagement. We need parent engagement. We need community engagement. We need to go beyond the school building to solve the problem. One of the things that President Obama recognized is that schools cannot solve the problem by themselves. And so in the Every Student Succeeds Act, which is also known as ESSA, he incorporated a parent and community engagement component. So when the laws were being written, every state to respond to that law had to show how they were going to engage the parents and the community. And some people ask, well, is this a reauthorization of No Child Left Behind? Actually, it's not. Daniel Gould, the chief academic officer for Broward County Public Schools, wants to take lessons learned in the past and create a new blueprint. And I want to draw from the past to something that Dr. Wanza has highlighted that has been withdrawn which is an expectation of intellectual and compassion discipline with our students. It is not just behavioral discipline that we should be measuring, but the intellectual discipline that our kids are being asked to on their homework. We've spent so much time on the rigor of our tests that we forgot to develop the rigor of their minds before they even sit in that test. When your kids from home come home from school, ask them to explain what it is they've been asked to do during that day. And if they are being graded on the colors that they've colored with, or the grammar of their expression and not the content of their ideas, they are being underserved. It is that soft prejudice of low expectations that becomes achievement gaps. Mr. Gould also sees the importance of working with black journalists and black media outlets. One of the reminders that the Every Student Succeeds Act has embedded into federal law is that we need to work with families to make sure that we're helping each student succeed. Here in Broward, that means informing parents of what we are doing. And in order to do that, we need channels of communication. And while we can send flyers home in backpacks and we can make phone calls and announcements, there is nothing like working with local journalists and local publications such as the West Side Gazette to make sure that our community is informed of what the expectations are and most importantly, what we as a collective body of school board, school administrators, and parents are doing to help students. A black media outlet that will play an important role is the West Side Gazette. The West Side Gazette is a black owned and operated newspaper that has been around since 1971 when it was started by Levi and Yvonne Henry. Bobby Henry, their son, took the paper over and is continuing their legacy. Perry Busby, a graduate from the HBCU Prairie View A&M, is a journalist for the West Side Gazette who specializes in data analysis. Goal explains what the ESSA data showed Broward County Schools. Our Every Student Succeeds Act data shows that we do have some areas where we have gaps that we are now reconfiguring our resource allocations to. Many of these are along demographic descriptors, issues of ethnicity, but we also have challenges around our English language learners and our students with disabilities subgroups. We have met with each principal to review their data results to make sure that they are focused on closing all achievement gaps within their schools. And then we as district leaders meet with principals to make sure that we start closing gaps across schools. Zip code should not be a determinant of life outcome. The Every Student Succeed Act is establishing new guardrails with new flexibility for us here in Broward to make sure that we meet the needs of every student. One of the black schools that is meeting the needs of every student is Dillard High School in Fort Lauderdale. We are currently working on a documentary, The Bottom, to show how DHS is doing that within its athletic programs and in the classroom. Faculty and staff is going the extra mile to prepare black youth for life after high school. 
Dr. Chavis explains as to support schools like Dillard to provide its students with these extra services because he believes desegregation didn't lead to integration. And the purpose of the Every Student Succeeds Act is to enable local school districts, statewide school districts, uh, to make sure that persons of color, minorities, those who are underserved, get an adequate education. There's nothing more important than a good public education. And so we're very pleased to be working in partnership with the West Side Gazette, which is a member of the NNPA, uh, to have a forum. The struggle of African Americans to have equality, fairness, justice in the public schools is a long struggle. Uh, at one time, it was legal that schools be segregated. Then after the 1954 Brown decision, Supreme Court decision, uh, schools, uh, segregated schools were ruled unconstitutional. That was in 1954. But it took to the 1970s and even into the early 80s for many school districts uh, to fully desegregate. And desegregation is not the same thing as integration. There's really never been any real integration. What has happened is that they dismantled a lot of the formerly black schools and made black students go to formerly white schools. So even in a desegregated situation, many black students still got the short end of the stick in terms of funding, in terms of adequate teachers, adequate supplies, adequate resources. Senator Perry E. Thurston explained how the federal standards are being implemented on the state level to close the gaps. We've got a lot of things happening on the state level. Some of it's not so good, in my opinion, for public education the way we would like to see it go in terms of some of the privatization issues. But in terms of drawing down the monies to make sure that we can help those students who we need to close those gaps, we're we're definitely looking at that and we're interested in that. Not only am I a graduate of the Broward County Public School System, both of my children are graduates and both of my parents are graduates and my grandparents are graduates of the Broward County School System. So the Broward County School System does a great job of preparing our students. What has changed from the time when I was in school is that, you know, I knew all of my teachers. In fact, to be quite honest with you, they went to my church as well. So, you know, we don't have that type of involvement anymore to make sure that the children are learning. Uh, so we've got a lot of assessments. As I say, when I was coming up, I didn't have the FCAT. However, I saw what it did to our community, and now we have the Florida State Assessment, and we're monitoring it at all times. But we're excited about our superintendent. We're excited about the, uh, our leaders in the school system, and they're about the business of making sure that all the community uh, learn and succeed. But how are local officials helping schools bridge these gaps? Dr. Valerie Smith Wanza is the Chief School Performance and Accountability Officer for District 226 and supports five other departments. While highlighting her responsibilities, she explains the processes she implements. So one of the um, key things that I am charged with is ensuring that schools have processes to stay connected with parents and the local community that they serve. I have firsthand experience in this, not only as a veteran educator of the school district, but five generations of my family have come through the Broward County Public Schools and parental involvement remains a mainstay and a needed asset in order for us to ensure that we not only meet children where they are, but help them to get to the goals that they wish to achieve. So as we work with our journalism partners across this community, like the West Side Gazette, which we've had a long-standing partnership, even back to the time when I was a classroom teacher at Dillard High School, the paper would come in and work with my students, not only to find their voice and to create their voice and have their voice heard, they helped us to reach their parents so that their parents could further develop their voice with their children. So I can say that as we continue to educate parents on what is now the newest reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965, which we commonly refer to as ESSA, it is going to take those renewed partnership, partnerships as well as strengthening them because we find that oftentimes parents may not read the newsletter of the school, but they will read their local newspaper. So we need those partnerships more renewed now so that we stay in touch with not only our students, the communities that they serve, and the parents who are a rich part of their children's educational process. Dr. Brenda Calhoun Snipes has over 39 years experience as an educator and administrator and believes that her experience gave her the tools to implement innovative and creative strategies to motivate her students. I did lots of different things in education and one of the last assignments I had was 
and elementary school principal for staff development. And it, wor it worked like a laboratory almost um, because we had to get students moving very quickly. And so you did innovative things that would get the students' interest. You get them get their interest and you can get them engaged and keep them engaged. And we um, managed time differently. We offered teaching strategies differently. And I, I do realize and, and am committed to the concept that every child can succeed. I really believe that, but you got to find the right touch. Everybody's not going to go down the same road. You got to find the thing that sparks an interest in each student, and that's hard, but it's necessary. Dr. Dorsey C. Miller, a civic and community organizer, does see certain shortcomings within education. One of the problems that I've seen <clears throat> over the years in education is that many times when our kids graduate from school, they aren't prepared for the world of work. And that's one of the major objectives of education in our public schools, to provide a mechanism so that our students will be ready for work and they will be participating, good citizens, and also to be able to make a good livelihood for themselves and for their families. And so when I got the opportunity to be a part of this particular program, because I believe that what will come out of this will be some of those things that we'll be able to use to do exactly that. Broward County Sheriff Gregory Tony also took part in the panel and believes that the Sheriff's Department can provide opportunities for the youth to be successful members of society. Any time we can provide an opportunity for our youth to be involved in educational opportunities, it do a couple things. One, it expands their ability to have opportunities afforded to them in the future uh, as they prepare for the academic world, for job opportunities, for college, and many other different facets that they're going to face. But the other side of it, speaking from the law enforcement uh, aspect, being a chief law enforcement officer for this county, we expand out and touch roughly 13 cities in terms of what's contract to us across roughly 1,200 square miles. So our deputies, my personnel, are constantly in the community engaging um, individuals on all different type of things. And so when our youth are not in school, it puts them in uh, positions where they either are participating in uh, un unwanted behavior or surround themselves in environments that put themselves uh, subject to law enforcement practices or being arrested. But during the panel discussion, Sheriff Tony faced some criticism. But we have some new folks in this community that have um, positions of power. And they weren't around when we were going through the, the heartache and the pain that we saw with children being uh, tore through that system. You know, Sheriff Tony, you are new to this community. Um, we hope that we do not destroy a program that has been successful in this community. And the reason why I'm going to say it plain and simple is that this program could very well disappear if we don't get the right support from our sheriff. So I'm going to tell this community. Sheriff Tony had no problem clapping back. I want to comment to Mr. Weeks' statement yes, sir. that I am new. That is the greatest myth that's been pushed out in this community, is that I am new. I have been in Broward County for over 15 years serving this community, bleeding on these streets throughout this entire county, not just Coral Springs. I understand the issues that exist not only in this community as it relates to the black folks here, I should remind him that yes, I've been the sheriff now for 10 months. I've been black for 40 years. You don't have to lecture me on the fights that exist here in this community. You don't have to lecture me about the injustices and discriminatory practice that exist from this position. I understand I am now the gatekeeper. I control the influx of what goes in and what stays out. I don't have to have anyone lecture me and give me some form of out or force me to make a decision. I've known these things long before I came into this position. And it was part of the reason why I accepted it. Because we've had people that served in this capacity that have given you promises. 
and they've signed off on singular documents that the superintendent has done an outstanding job with. But that's one program. I know from my personal experiences, had it not been for the educational opportunities that was provided to me from the summer school programs to the after school um, educational opportunities, I, <clears throat> I would have fallen victim to many of the things that I experienced from crimes to drugs and so on and so forth that, that I absorbed in North Philadelphia. So now I'm being here for roughly 15 years, it's no different if the young individuals don't have anything that they can focus on that's going to help benefit their lives in the long run, then they're more than likely to fall into criminality, skipping school, and putting themselves in positions that impact them for a long, long time. Panel members agreed to come together as a community to see how they can work together. Brother Chavis closed the town hall meeting by saying the following. I, I can say for a record that in the last three years, We've had town hall meetings like this all over the United States. <laughs> Hands down, this is the best one. Right. 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 We have to inspire one another. Yes. We come at this from different positions. It's like a family. But that's what enriches this community. This is Kevin Roberson in Fort Lauderdale, Florida for the Westside Gazette.